Hello and welcome back. This video is going to be about when the uh, cross section is going to be under bending moment, but uh, for example, it is not pure bending. It will happen when we have a compressive load on the cross section or the cross section is not symmetrical about its major axis on bending. Suppose we have a beam which is under a transverse load with the length of L. And let's assume that the cross section is going to be a T section, 150 by 10, 200 by 10. For simplicity and conservative evaluation, we can assume that the weld uh, is not to be considered in the calculation of the free length of the element. If you look at the cross section from the side view in the middle of the beam, it will be under bending moment. And this bending moment is going to be positive, meaning that the flange will be under compression. Coming back to the table 5.2, this time the parts which are subjected to compression or bending if we look at table 5.2 sheet 2 out of 3, we can see that both uh, flange and also the web are connected with one end, meaning that uh, sheet 2 should be used. And for the flange which is under compression, this will be C, which is about 70 millimeter. And for the web, this will be C, which is 200 millimeter. As I mentioned, we ignored the effect of the weld. Now, if we look at the table here, this is going to be part subjected to compression. And for example, here we can see that the flange is completely under compression. So for this case, we can follow these values in the first column. But for the web, the web will be under bending moment. And as far as the elastic neutral axis and elastic neutral axis differ in this section, you can check the playlist structural mechanics and also video number seven specifically for calculation of elastic and plastic neutral axis. As a result, this web will be partially under compression and partially under tension. It means that for checking this part, we need to go through this. When the bending moment is positive, meaning that the bottom is in tension, as a result, the teeth will be in tension. So again, you can see that the last column should be used. And then we have uh, two options for class one and two we need to sketch the plastic behavior of the cross section and finding out the value of alpha. Or if it's going to be class three, then we need to sketch the third one, which is according to the elastic. So let's uh, assume first that the web is going to be plastic or is going to be class one and two or two. First of all, plastic neutral axis needs to be calculated. And in our cross section, we assume that the plastic neutral axis will be somewhere here. With the length of Y, area above the neutral axis should be the same as area at the bottom. 150 times 10 plus Y times 10 equals to 200 minus Y times 10. So, it will be 25 millimeter from the connection point. And now we can sketch if it has a plastic behavior, how it would uh, distribute the stress. Only 25 millimeter of the web will be under compression. And this will be the stress distribution at this level. And the rest will be under tension. Now coming back to here we can see that tip is uh, in tension and alpha value is the ratio length of the web which is in compression. So alpha in this case will be 25 divided by 200 which is 0 0.125. And then to have a plastic behavior or plastic capacity we need to check if the cross section in this case is going to be cross section class 1 or 2. Let's assume that the 
fy is 275 megapascal and according to that fy is 275 megapascal so epsilon will be 0.92 now the limits for cross section class 1 and 2 can be calculated 9 times epsilon divided by alpha s square root of alpha or 10 times epsilon divided by alpha s square root of alpha so the value is 187 and it's going to be 10 it will be 208 here we can see that only 12 percent of the web is under compression as a result it might be clear that okay it's not uh, susceptible to have a local buckling issue so c over t in this case is 200 divided by 10 and it is 20 and it's less than 187 so web will be from class 1 for the flange c over t is 7 and it should be checked by the value of 9 epsilon and 10 epsilon 9 times 0 0.92 is 8.3 flange is class as a result for the positive bending moment it will be class 1 now assume that the same cross section is going to be under a negative bending moment now we change the beam to be a fixed end beam under the distributed load of q and now here we can see that the moment is negative at the support so the same cross section but this time it's under negative bending moment here we can see that this part is going to be under compression now let's bring our table so this time uh, the web is under more compression and the flange will be under tension so we don't need to check flange anymore even though it was class one if it was under compression but this time the tip will be in compression and now alpha will be that ratio the plastic neutral axis is not changed as a result if we sketch the cross section 25 millimeter is still the distance towards the flange in plastic behavior but this time majority of the web will be under compression so here alpha will be 175 divided by 200 millimeter 0.875 epsilon remains the same 0.92 and now we need to check with these two values. So limits for cross section class one and two will be nine epsilon divided by alpha and 10 epsilon divided by alpha. Nine times 0 0.92 divided by 0 0.875, it will be 946 and the other one will be 10.5. C over T in this case, is 200 divided by 10 which is 20 and it's not less than neither 9.46 nor 10.5 as a result it's not class 1 or class 2 so now we have to check the next option if the uh, web is from class 3 for that now we need to sketch the stress deformation in elastic phase when it comes to elastic phase then the plastic neutral axis is not valid anymore we have to calculate the elastic neutral axis we can have a baseline i assume that the baseline is the bottom area 1 200 times 10 and the center is 100 millimeter the other one is 150 times 10 times 205 millimeter divided by the summation of area which is 200 times 10 plus 150 times 10 a square millimeter so y bar will be 145 millimeter and here this is 145 millimeter and the rest will be 55 millimeter we can see that the elastic neutral axis is not in the same position of plastic neutral axis so then if we sketch the bending moment stress in this cross section according to its location of the neutral axis 
bending moment is negative and here we will have compression and the other side we will have tension coming back to our table here we can see that in this case we need to calculate k sigma which is coming from euro code 1993.15 and epsilon is 0 0.92 the only thing that we need is calculation of k sigma this value is given in table for two outstand compression elements here we can see that uh, we have one line which is presenting the connected part and the other side at the end of C it is the tip which is free and is not connected to the other element and if we look at our case uh, the connected part is uh, in tension and the free part is in compression if we look at this table we can see that the value of sigma 2 uh, is sketched less than sigma 1 but if we look at the numbers here for example we can see that the value can be something between 1 and minus 3 so it means that uh, necessarily the value is not between 1 and minus 1 as a stated compression is positive so here we can see that sigma 2 in the first one sigma 2 and sigma 1 are both in compression the second one sigma 2 is in tension and sigma 1 is in compression and the other two as such so here this will be our sigma 2 and this will be our sigma 1 and sigma 2 divided by sigma 1 in elastic as far as sigma is m y divided by i is going to be y2 divided by 1 1 y2 is 55 millimeter and y1 is minus 145 millimeter as a result the ratio between sigma 2 and sigma 1 will be 55 divided by 145 which is 0 0.38 and it's negative and this value is known as psi so from the equation we can calculate a sigma 57 21 0 0.38 so it will be 0 0.66 now we have the value of k sigma and coming back to our table we just need to check this equation to be valid so in our case c over t is 200 millimeter divided by 10 which is 20 and the maximum limit in cross section class 3 is 21 times epsilon s square root of k sigma k sigma is 0 0.66 and epsilon is 0 0.92 as a result this limit will be 15.7 we can see that the cross section is also not categorized as class 3 as a result the cross section class will be 4 that's the end of this video uh, the material is the same material for example a steel but the cross section was asymmetric uh, about the major bending axis for the positive bending moment it was categorized to be class one however when we reversed the bending moment or we assumed that we might have negative bending moment in the beam or in the cross section then the behavior was completely different and it was categorized to be cross-section class 4. That is the end of this video. I will go through the uh, symmetrical eye section in the next video but this time I will apply the compressive force to the cross-section including the bending moment. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.